Coming up on anti-aircraft guns. Watch out for mass attacks. Eight and ten abreast. B-17s flew in every American theater of war during World War II. They were one of the toughest, heaviest armed, and feared bombers of the war. Out of the 12,731 which were built, 46 are surviving today, and these beautiful aircraft, often with their distinguished nose art, have made their rounds into dozens of movies, for the production companies lucky enough to access them. Sir? Oh, no, thank you, sir. Films such as 12 O'Clock High and The Memphis Bell provide the most authentic B-17 shots in cinema. Other films like the Over the Top Red Tails and Fortress offer, for better or worse, CGI rendered B-17s. Then there are the nigh unwatchable Shadow in the Cloud and Reign of the Gargoyles, centered on B-17s in a fantasy horror setting. Watch those movies at your own discretion. My powers continue. There are also some interesting animated movies featuring B-17s, like Heavy Metal, The Liberator, and The Cockpit. And yes, it's usually one of the coolest planes to play in most video games. But let's take a look at why this particular bomber is so famous. The B-17 first made flight in 1935, and it ended its career in 1968 in the Brazilian Air Force. It was the third most produced bomber in history, behind the excellent B-24 Liberator and the German twin-engine Ju-88. The B-17, though used in both Asia and North Africa, is most famous for its daytime strategic bombing campaign against Germany. Out of the 1.5 million tons of bombs dropped on Germany, 640,000 tons of those were dropped from B-17s. The B-17 also took the brunt of German air defenses, primarily during the more high-risk daytime bombings. 4,735 B-17s were lost during combat missions. Those losses were in spite of their ever-improving armament. By 1943, the most famous ball turret would be added, followed by a chin turret. The final production model, the B-17G, would have 13 50 caliber machine guns and a normal bomb load of 6,000 pounds. The European theaters where Hollywood and history converge on the importance of the B-17, particularly when covering the 8th Air Force, which suffered half the U.S. Army Air Force's casualties in World War II, 47,000 plus casualties with more than 26,000 deaths. The experiences of the 8th Air Force bomber units are captured well in 12 o'clock high and the Memphis Bell. The Memphis Bell is one of the best B-17 films ever made. Though the events are loosely based on fact, it provides many excellent scenes of fragile life aboard a World War II bomber. The Memphis Bell production procured five real B-17 warbirds for filming. Many of these planes would be modified to look like B-17Fs, having their chin turrets removed and painted olive green. Many would have their nose art and squadron markings changed during the filming to represent different aircraft. Sadly, one B-17G hit a tree during the filming caught fire and was destroyed, which does make a case in favor of CGI use. Overall though, this is a must-see war movie. To crew. How bad are we hit? The screenwriters for 12 O'Clock High drew on their own wartime experiences serving with the 8th Air Force. 12 O'Clock High from 1949 was cited by bomber veterans of World War II as being an excellent depiction of combat experience aboard a bomber. 12 O'Clock High used by today's standards an incredible 12 B-17s for filming. Amazingly, this included aircraft that had been used in the 1949 Bikini Atomic Experiments. These particular aircraft could only be used for limited periods due to radiation. Unthinkable by today's historical love for the aircraft, the production company actually paid a stunt pilot to crash land a B-17 in a solo flight. By 1943, fighter escort from long-range P-51 Mustangs began making a significant difference for the survivability of B-17s. Red Tails and the Tuskegee Airmen tell the story of African-American pilots escorting B-17s. Red Tails is not a bad film if you're just looking for an action film. 
It's an important story, but there are some historical dubious scenes, including the claim that no B-17s were shot down while being escorted by the Red Tails. Ultimately, the Red Tails did provide notable protection for B-17s, and the film's need to exaggerate events seems unnecessary. Arguably, the better film of the two is the Tuskegee Airmen from 1995, which certainly has a lower budget, but it's well acted and a good portrayal of the same story. Heads up, gentlemen. Here it comes. One often overlooked B-17 movie is Fortress from 2012. It's a low-budget production with an equivalent cast, but unique in that it covers the bombing of Rome, something that is often overlooked in World War II history due to the questionable tactical value of these particular bombings, given the loss of civilian life and bomber crews. I'd say give this film a shot, but temper your expectations. One production that might surprise most people is the hardly heard of 1993 anime Cockpit. It's a complete work of fiction, but features detailed drawings of Spitfires, FW-190s, and a TA 152H1. But of course, most interestingly, a captured B-17 bomber taking part in a clandestine mission. Amazingly, Germans actually did capture and repurpose several B-17s, which were used for training and other special missions. This production is a nod to such events. Though the B-17 is often associated with the European theater of war, before World War II the majority of the aircraft were stationed in the Pacific, serving as a deterrent to the Japanese. Twelve of these bombers were in Hawaii at the time of the Pearl Harbor attack, with six approaching Hickam Field on this very day. This is shown in the film Tora Tora Tora. Historically, five B-17s were destroyed by the Japanese on this day. Ironically, one was damaged during the filming of Tora 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 as well. The crash landing as seen here was not intentional, however still used as part of the film. Luckily, the aircraft was able to be repaired. Bomber crews had horrific loss ratios. They were also bound to execute strategies that involved bombing civilians. Strategies that are debated to this day. B-17 crews, or otherwise, it is important to remember that these bombers were instruments of total war, and both the crews and civilians should all be remembered. That being said, let's end the video with a scene from James Bond Thunderball, which features an inspiring B-17 that was converted to the peaceful role of fighting forest fires and before that, used to develop the Fulton Skyhook system. Turn out planes here faster than bullets coming out of a machine gun. Alright, I'm Johnny, and I want to thank you for watching this brief on the B-17, and some of the movies it was featured in. I hope to see you in the next video.